Hey guys, today I'm going to be looking at the Logavolin 8 year old 200th anniversary compared to the standard 16 year old. Now, while I do this, I am going to be reviewing the 8 year old, but I wanted to give you guys a point of comparison. If you already know that you like Logavolin, whether or not you're going to enjoy uh, this 200th anniversary and whether or not it's worth finding. Now, I will say this is somewhat unusual because normally when a scotch producer releases a special edition or something, it's older than their standard bottling. Lagavulin, however, because their standard bottling is a 16-year-old, they've chosen to do two releases. They did both, I believe, a 25-year-old and an 8-year-old. Now, the 25-year-old costs like $1,300, so that is well outside of my price range. However, their 8-year-old is set at about $70. Now, I was a little bit sad to find out when I picked up this bottle that if I had gotten this back in October, it would have been about $55. So I think depending on where you are um, and when your store bought their bottles, if you find it, it may be a little bit cheaper for you. If it is cheaper, then definitely take advantage of that. And I will say it's very nice to see that in a special edition bottling here, they're not using a lot of artificial coloring to try and make it look older or more flavored than it is because people have that faulty association of flavor and color in their scotch. So I'll go ahead and smell it for you. Immediately there's like lemon and peat, obviously peat. But it's not anywhere to the extent Lefroy 10 year old or our big 10. I'm getting a little bit of candied fruit, um, like orchard fruits too. There's, there's something else there. There's like a cinnamon or there's a, there's an aroma of hay. So definitely the barley coming through. But it's definitely a sweet and fairly light nose. So we'll see how it tastes. Now, what's really interesting about this is while you hold it in your mouth, you don't taste the peat really at all. Um, the front of the palate is a lot of lemon, it's honey. There's a lot of vanilla there. It's very buttery, almost like a custard and sweet. Surprisingly sweet for uh, Lagavulin. But as soon as you swallow, the finish gets a lot of the dryness from the peat and a lot of the smoke. And I will say, as you let this sit in the glass, the peat kind of changes from, uh, from like an herbal peat to a little bit more of a fire peat. Very nice whiskey. Bottled at 48% ABV. They're giving you extra whiskey in the bottle. They're not trying to extend it as far as they can. This is a really nice example of showing that age does not necessarily indicate quality. So now we'll look at the 16. It's, it's a much uh, darker nose. There's definitely peat, but it's it's like mossy. They're much more malty. There's definitely some leather coming out there. And some oak. Now this is bottled at a lower proof, 43%, but it's still just significantly smoother. Um, not to say that this isn't smooth. This is much more well-balanced uh, flavor-wise. The, the impact of the flavor in your mouth is more subtle. It's still very full, but the peat is more herbal. It's more... Uh, 
It's more mossy, earthy, rather than smoky and campfirey compared to the eight-year-old. Of the two, um, they're really completely different beasts. The 16-year-old, I think, is the better whiskey still. Uh, however, the eight-year-old is a much more interesting whiskey. It has a lot of liveliness in it. So if you have the chance to try these side by side, I highly recommend that you do so because it's a perfect example of young whiskey versus old whiskey and it being the same make and how dramatically different the flavors can be. Because although, yes, I can, I can still tell that this is Lagavulin and that this is Lagavulin. There are similar characteristics there. The, the slightly sweet flavor to it, um, the little bit of meatiness to the flavor is consistent throughout, but the peat manifests itself completely differently in these two. In the eight-year-old, it's lemon, it's cinnamon, it's fruity, um, and in the 16-year-old, it's moss and earth and leather. It's almost not fair to compare the two in terms of saying one's better than the other because depending on what mood you're in, if you want something more lively, more dancing around on your palate in terms of flavor, you're going to want the 8-year-old. The 8-year-old is the more interesting of the two. But if you want to really get a refined flavor, a really balanced flavor, you're going to want to go with the 16-year-old. It There's a reason this is the whiskey that Lagavulin makes all year long uh, and that their other bottlings are special releases. It's because this is so dang good. Now, that being said, for an 8-year-old whiskey, this blows our Beg 10 out of the water. This blows Lafroig 10 out of the water, in my opinion. Those guys, yeah, they have a lot of peat to them, but there's nothing interesting going on with the peat. This has much more intricate flavors and whatnot. So if I was going to rate this, and assuming you can find this at the $60 mark, like the original pricing was uh, by my local store, 95. This is fantastic. This is prime example of why non-age statement whiskeys should just go ahead and release their age. In my opinion, this proves that age does not indicate quality. This is very good whiskey, especially at 48% ABV. It's, it doesn't smell like nail polish remover. It doesn't taste like nail polish remover. This is full bodied, full flavored, really, really well put together. I, I really wouldn't go above $70, $75 for this bottle just because I think it does lack some refinement in the flavor. But it's so interesting and it doesn't taste like really young whiskey. It's not lacking flavor. It's not light. So definitely if you have a chance to try this, pick it up. I love it. That being said, I did have a friend that tried this and he was not that impressed. He didn't think it showed that real subtle maturity and complexity that Lagavulin is known for. And he felt it was too much on the citrusy, sweeter side. Uh, so that's going to be up to you. If you like stuff like Bowmore 12, um, I think this is going to be right up your alley. Where it's a slightly sweeter Isla, but still full of complexity. Definitely got some peat smoke there. So please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. And check out my review of Lagavulin 16 uh, down below. Thank you for watching.